Hi, my name is Andrew, and I'd like to talk about pop-up windows in Vim. Uh, they're very similar to floating windows in uh, NeoVim. They're a new feature in 8.2, um, and they can be used to show uh, pop-ups with information about code, or they can use, be used for games or for uh, user interfaces. Um, and one thing that I've used them for is a plugin called Quick Peek. Uh, what Quick Peek provides to you is uh, a pop-up that shows you a preview of the entry under the cursor in a quick fix window. Uh, you can still interact with the quick fix window normally, and you can see that the pop-up goes away when you do that, but it gives you a little bit of context um, of about the line under the cursor. You can turn it on and off uh, when it gets in the way. And uh, that's pretty much it, really, about quick peek. Um, but what I want to continue with uh, in this video is talk to you about uh, pop-ups in general. I'd like to show you some of the components that went into building these plugins because build this plugin because I think that it's uh, very straightforward um, and it uh, doesn't take a lot of effort to build something useful by using pop-up windows. The easiest way to create a pop-up in Vim is by using the pop-up create function with a single argument that is a string and a second argument that is, that is an empty dictionary. Um, if we copy this into the command line, this is what we get. Example text right in the middle of the screen. Um, this is fine, but we can't really do anything away with it. We can't really close it. We can call pop-up clear manually to uh, just clear all pop-ups, um, which is a convenient thing to know. Uh, I've put this into the buffer because I'm going to reevaluate the buffer using source, the, com the sort of command source, which evaluates uh, a file as Vim script, and I'm going to use percentage um, as a placeholder for uh, the current file. And this evaluates these two commands. First clear and then create this. And if I comment this out, um, it's going to just clear uh, the pop-ups and do nothing else. To make this easy, I have a mapping here, um, which is just going to execute this, uh, just have this sequence of keys um, happen on pressing uh, bank in normal mode. And this mapping is only executed, uh, is executed with no remaps. So uh, no other mappings are gonna be evaluated uh, recursively. And I'm gonna comment this out and just use a, a key binding to do this. Now, um, what else can we do here? Well, um, first off, it's possible to, um, to do this with a list of strings. If you provide a list of strings as the first argument to pop-up create, this is also going to show a pop-up with every uh, string in that list showing up on a separate line. Um, this is gonna be convenient for, uh, you know, this is convenient for some particular cases, but for now I'm just gonna remove this. Um, what else can we do? Um, we can add a close button. And it shows up right here as a little X, uh, which is not easy to see, but it does work. Um, if you have a uh, button set up in your terminal, um, I can also add a uh, border to make this easier to see. A lot, a lot nicer uh, like this. Uh, the border is an empty list because it, it can actually uh, be a list of uh, Boolean values or uh, I guess, you know, numeric uh, values, uh, one or zero, depending on which sides the border should show up in. By default, it just shows up everywhere with an empty list. How do we figure out um, which, you know, what kind of options we have? Uh, well, we can help pop up create and add a, a bracket here to have the help uh, look for a function. And if we scroll around here, we can see the pop-up create arguments holds the full reference. We can press control square bracket to follow this. And we can see that there's a lot of options, line, column, flip, etc. cetera. Um, you can go over all of these and try to figure out what kind of things you can do. For now, I'm just gonna use uh, a few of them. Um, to make this easier, once we have more options, um, I can you know, split this dictionary into multiple lines by prefixing every next line with uh, a backslash. It's a bit weird, but this is just how script works. So let me show you uh, a more complicated example. And this one does not actually open a, uh, um, a piece of text. It opens a number. Vimrc buffer is going to have to be some sort of a number, and if you provide a number to pop-up create, it looks for a buffer with that number, and it opens that. Now, if I just run this command, it's actually gonna blow up because it says buffer minus one does not exist. That's because uh, the file um, uh, home.vmrc is not, is not loaded, 
So I'm going to load this now by opening it up and then hiding it. And now if I run this, um, I get this buffer in a nice uh, window that I can scroll through. Um, I can resize and I can close. Um, the resize comes from this option. We get the close, we get the border, and we just have parameters for the size. Um, but because this is a buffer, and we can, we can see that it's a buffer, it's buffer number six, we can just use a number here, in fact, this works just fine. Um, and we can also um, do some, some uh, we can also execute, have the, you know, uh, the pop-up create function returns a pop-up identifier, which is just a window identifier. Uh, all windows in Vim have that. Pop-ups have, have it as well. And we can use the win execute function to execute uh, commands in its command line, essentially. So if we run this, we can see there's no line numbering. Uh, I can close this up. And if I afterwards, I, if I call win execute with this pop-up identifier, and I call uh, set number, we get line numbering. So what else can we do? Well, the pop-up notification function is a different way to show a pop-up. Here's how it shows up. Um, it has a different syntax than the one that you saw. It's colored differently as well. Like there's a slight tint to it, uh, you can see. And um, it's actually uh, not something special at all. Pop-up notification is actually just a shorthand for calling pop-up create uh, with the same first argument and with some pre-filled um, option argument, yeah, pre-filled options that you can add on to. Um, and this particular one shows um, the, uh, the current battery level by executing the system list command, which gives us a list of strings which works the same way as pop create. So that's a useful shorthand to show a notification in particular. And we can, um, we can actually, uh, if we move all clear here, we can actually show uh, several ones. Again, there's an option that lets these notifications stack on top of each other, which is pretty convenient. Um, another interesting shorthand is showing a pop-up at the cursor position. Um, this one is gonna be, uh, have a value that's a bit more complicated. I'm going to call the sin ID function to get the syntax identifier of the current line at the current column. Um, the, the last argument uh, has to do with transparency and it's not important right now. Um, this syntax ID is gonna give me like a numeric identifier. That numeric identifier I can provide to the sin ID at zero function to get the attribute of that syntax group, uh, particularly the name. And the sin ID trans function uh, gets the translated syntax ID, uh, which is often what it you know, what it gets to translate it to in terms of highlighting. So uh, if I run this now, you can see that the sin, ID, uh, sin name is vim func name, and the highlight group is function. Um, so just evaluating this file takes the current cursor position. Um, like you can see that this is a vim string, this is a vim operator, and this is a vim operator parent, I would guess the closest one uh, is that. And a pop at the cursor is again, a shorthand for pop-up create, which has a few extra parameters as to where the pop-up is going to show up um, and uh, how it's going to behave, which again, you can just do with pop-up create, but this is just um, like a nice convenience. Now, suppose we wanted to run this um, on cursor moved. Why? Because otherwise we'd have to just uh, enable it, like source the file every time we want to see this pop-up. Um, First off, we can you know, put this in a function. We're gonna call this function show popup and move all of this here. Now, if I evaluate this file, nothing happens because this just defines a function. We can call show popup and this works now. Now, suppose we wanted to put this in a mapping. Um, we could do something like this, control P and say call s show pop up. Notice uh, the, the starting colon, notice the carriage return in the end. Um, this mapping is um, defined in normal mode, uh, control P, and it literally translates this sequence of keys or this key to this sequence of keys. So we need to repeat uh, a colon to enter command line mode, call s show pop up, and then run this. Now, if I execute this file right now, and I press Control P, I'm gonna get an error 
which says using SID not in a script context. This can be very confusing if you don't know what ha what's happening. What is happening is that this function is defined with the S prefix. This is a scope. It means that the function is only visible within the current script. In the current script, we can call as show popup, and this is going to work because this line is in the current script. But if we run this in the command line, that's not going to happen because um, as show popup gets translated to something special. Um, what it gets translated to is this special um, sign, the special SNR 273. 273 is the ID of the script, uh, which gets defined at loading time. Now, this is a bit weird, probably. Um, why does this not work? Why does it just not translate S colon within the mapping? Well, it doesn't translate it because um, this is just a sequence of keys, as I said. So the Nora map um, is just translates this sequence of keys. So this sequence of keys, and if we had S colon anywhere else within the function, it, it, it will also get translated. Uh, this, it's not really parsed as an expression or anything like that. So SID is uh, a special macro that Neuromap knows to, to translate in the same way that it has count and various other ones like uh, carriage return as well, is, as well is in some way a shorthand for a particular uh, set of keys. Now, uh, why would this function definition not have SID here? Well, because it would be a special syntax only for this, whereas the scope is something well defined for Vim expressions. Uh, there's also a buffer local scope, a global scope, uh, gcon, and so on and so forth. So both of these make sense within their contexts. Um, they're just uh, a bit weird when taken, uh, you know, when taken, when looked at, um, or compared, basically. Now, um, we don't want to show this pop-up exactly. What I want to do is toggle this pop-up, so uh, toggle its visibility. How do I do this? Well, first off, I want this to show up on cursor move, right? So I'm going to create an auto command, cursor moved. Um, this argument, the star, uh, I'm not going to talk about this right now, but it's important for, uh, it's the valid argument to use for cursor move in particular. I'm going to call show pop-up, right? Um, notice that S colon works here because this is also defined in this current uh, script and has a script context. I'm not actually going to uh, run this because um, if I run this, it's going to attach this auto command to the global context, to the global uh, auto command set, um, and it's going to keep doing that. Um, so it's just going to, it's never, it's never going to be removed. Now, in order to be able to remove it, I can add a, a, an auto command group called syntax pop-up, put this in, and auto command with a bang is going to delete all the auto commands within the current group. If we put this in the global scope, it's just going to delete all auto commands, which you really don't want to do because it's going to break uh, Vim. It's going to break a lot of built-ins. So if I execute this and I move the cursor, you can see that on every cursor move, show pop-up is being called, which is exactly what we want. If we want to disable this, I can comment this out if I do this file again. And this deletes all the other commands and nothing else, nothing else gets attached. So this is the way to enable it. This is the way to disable it. So let's put these in functions. Enable pop-up. Right. And disable pop-up. In order to enable, uh, to be able to toggle a pop-up which eventually we want to do. We need to um, check if it's currently open. So we can say if syntax pop-up is larger than zero, uh, which I'm going to define in a bit. I'm going to call enable, actually disable pop-up, right? Because it all, it's already opened. Otherwise, I'm going to call enable pop-up. Um, this syntax pop-up variable is going to be pop-up is going to be zero by default so some sort of a service value and it's going to be assigned on show and once we disable it uh, what would disabling mean it would also mean uh, syntax pop-up is equal to zero right now is this going to work well let's find out first off I valid this file nothing happens control P and now it shows up Control P again, and it's gone. 
this is nice. Um, but pressing Control P does not immediately show the pop-up, so that's a bit inconvenient. Um, in order to do this, we can say uh, on enabling also call S show pop-up, right? How about this? Control P shows it immediately. Control P. Um, it does not remove it immediately, so that's a bit inconvenient. So what we can do is call pop-up clear as syntax pop-up, right? And um, if we want to be completionist, we can have a uh, hide pop-up function. Put this here. So show pop-up and hide pop-up actually show or hide the pop-up, whereas enable and disable um, take care to uh, attach the write out commands. Does this work? Well, let's check, find out. It shows up immediately. It uh, moves around and uh, pressing draw P removes it immediately. Now, um, there's a bit of a problem here is that you can see that if you are not on a syntax group, uh, sort of nothing happens, which is a bit weird. Um, what can we do about this? Well, mm, well, we can delete, we can check if sin ID is larger than zero. Or rather, if it is, uh, if it's equal to zero, we can just not show a pop-up, I guess, right? Is that gonna work? Yes, it does. You can see that there's no more, uh, no longer a pop-up uh, in the gaps. And that's pretty much it. Um, you can see how the components fit together uh, to build QuickPeak. Um, you can get the buffer of the line under the window by using the get QF list function. This gives you the full quick fix list, um, one dictionary per every entry, um, with the buffer number of that entry uh, being very easily available. You can use that to show a pop up and you can use the cursor removed auto command to re-render the pop-up, uh, updating it on every individual line. Um, this is it. You can install QuickPeak um, from GitHub, as I mentioned. Uh, but um, if you'd like to build something similar, or if you'd, you'd like to build, use these components to build something uh, on your own, uh, you know, go ahead, have fun with it. Um, thank you for your time, and happy vimming.